Amen. Let me welcome you to Bible study tonight. I believe you are in the focus of God for what God has in his mind. And I believe that your life will never remain the same. Let us pray. Father, tonight we are grateful. We give you all the glory and honor. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to know you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to serve you. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege to access your presence. Thank you for what you are doing in our days. Thank you for what you are doing in our time. Father, we return all the glory to you. Be thou exalted in Jesus' name. Tonight, we are looking up to you with expectation that you will help us again as we depend upon the Holy Spirit to teach us the mysteries of the kingdom, that you will grant us access into the truth, that you will open up the revelation of the word of God unto us, and you will feed us and strengthen us. You will correct us. You will bring stability into our lives as we know your mind and as we connect to the truth by your spirit tonight in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that tonight's fellowship will be a great investment into the lives and destiny of everyone. Thank you, Father. Great Holy Spirit, be free among us. Do the things that only you can do. Say the things that only you can say. Take us beyond the language of the word. Take us into the experience of the truth such that our lives will not remain the same. Online, on ground, let there be a release of your blessings, a release of grace, a release of knowledge, a release of understanding, and a release of all that is needed to perfect us and mature us in your purpose in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Let me welcome you tonight. Just like I tell you regularly, anytime you are in the presence of God, you must take yourself serious because God is serious about you. And I'm praying that you will also be serious about what God is serious about in the name of Jesus. Tonight, I have the leading of the Holy Spirit to continue the teaching I started on Sunday. This is a unique season, a unique time for us. God spoke to me that our 25th wedding anniversary it's a time of ministration. It's a time of impartation. It's a time of the release of grace. The occasion in the lives of God's servants are the opportunity for impartation and release of grace. Is that okay? When you are blessed to be under an anointed servant of God, take note of the occasions in their life. They are opportunities for you to re receive grace and to receive impartation. And on, on Sunday, I told you that every Sunday in the month of May, we are going to focus on the family. You remember that. We are going to focus on the family to commemorate the our 25th wedding anniversary. It is indeed a milestone. 25 is a specific prophetic figure in the Bible. And staying 25 years in marriage and marriage without tears, beloved, there are things that God has taught us that God wants me to share with you. And I want you to take note of them. I have discovered that 
you cannot talk of impartation if you are not talking of from experience. There are things that God has taken us through in our 25 years of marriage that the lessons that God has taught us by the Holy Spirit, God gave us the clearance to teach those things in this period. Are you hearing me now? That was why I was talking about family as a tool in the hand of God. On I told you family is a tool in the hand of God because many people today do not have a correct perspective of family. They don't have a kingdom perspective of family. They just believe that a man is old enough to marry so he settles down and begins to raise a family. And they believe a woman is old enough to marry and settle down, begin to raise a family. In the hearts of most people in the world, what is in their heart when they think about family is somebody to have children for or somebody to have children for you. So it's all about carnal things. It's all about feelings that are fleeting. But that's not the perspective of God. And I have discovered that when people that are going with that perspective always have problems. Because that's not the purpose of God for establishing family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And a lot of people that have the wrong perspective are running their marriage and family with carnal principles, traditions of men, and such marriage and family have not fulfilled the purpose of God. And a lot of things are happening in the lives of people today. But beloved, this 25th celebration is not a celebration per se. We are, we are, we are, we are, it's a time of impartation. And if you call it a celebration, we are talking about a celebration of grace. A celebration of the grace of God. A celebration of the wisdom of God. A celebration of the power of God. A, a challenge, a, an example that God is placing before you to make you know that irrespective of your experiences about marriage and family, that it is possible to have a marriage without tears. It is possible to have a peaceful family, a purposeful family, a family that will fulfill the purpose of God. And it is also a time to have a better understanding of the perspectives of God as far as family is concerned. We are not going to be successful in building a family purposefully for God until we understand the perspectives of God about family. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? When you don't have an understanding of divine perspectives of family, what is family in the sight of God? You will never be able to align your family with his own perspective. And when there is no alignment of your family with divine perspectives, there will be a problem. And a lot of people have bad stories to tell about marriage. In fact, some people have concluded that they are not going to marry again. Because almost everybody around them have marital problems, family problems, problem of disunity, problem. A lot of people suffer in marriage. So many people already have a defeated mentality about it. But that's not the plan of God. So God told me that this season is of this 25th wedding anniversary must be a time of teaching, a time of training, a time of impartation, a time of the release of grace. So that God gave me allowance to share with you all the things that God has taught us. All the things that the Holy Spirit has taught us. The lessons we have learned. The secrets that made it work with us. I told you on Sunday, some people believe that, well, some people, God loved them more than, more, than, more than me. That's why their marriage is like that. That's wrong. God doesn't love anybody more than you. 
In fact, I told you that God loves you the same way he loves Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I say now? God loves you the same way he loves Jesus Christ. So don't think that, well, God loves some people. That's why their marriage is successful. That's why their family is successful. That's why their family is peaceful. Now, God loves you too. The only problem is, what do you know? What are the things that you know? What are the truth guiding marriage and family life that you know? That you are walking by? That is what makes the difference. And this is what you have come to learn. I hope this teaching will bless somebody tonight. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God loves you the same way he loves Jesus Christ. In fact, some people say, well, you can say that because you are a pastor. Your wife is a pastor. That's why your marriage is without tears. That's why your, your 25 years has been wonderful and all that. Beloved, haven't you seen the marriage and family of pastors scatter? Huh? Haven't you seen? I asked you on Sunday, and you told me there are several examples. In fact, we don't need to go too far before you see even Pentecostal pastors that their, their, their husband and wife are Pentecostal ministers. You see their marriage breaking. The principles of God have no respect for status. The Bible says, ye shall know the truth, and the truth will what? Will make you free. That word is relevant to anybody, irrespective of status. So if I say I'm a pastor, and I'm not functioning by the word of God, I'm not going to get the profit of the word of God in my experience. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Anyone without, a, anyone who does not flow and practice the truth of the word of God in his marriage and family can never get the result of the word of God. In fact, that's why you see things happening. The devil is going to be powerful when people don't practice the truth. Because the atmosphere of error, ignorance, and rebellion empowers the devil to operate in people's lives, in people's destinies, and in people's family. But I believe it's our season. Our season of deliverance, our season of redemption, our season of renewal, our season of knowledge, our season of understanding. Those of you that you are not yet married, you are the one that I mostly congratulate because these teachings will give you a foundation of biblical perspective of what marriage and family is all about. So that it's going to correct all the wrong impressions you have and it's going to deliver you from the influence of the negative examples you have seen around you. And it's going to strengthen your faith to believe that you can truly have marriage without tears. And you can raise a family that will be stable and productive for God. Did you get that now? So on Sunday, so this, today I'm going to start the, uh, the second teaching I couldn't do on Sunday. Okay, obviously we will not be able to finish that today, but for the whole of May, we are going to focus on marriage, family, marriage, family, in our Bible study and in our Sunday service. So by the grace of God, June, we will resume our series of studies in the book of Revelation. Is that okay? That is our way of celebrating the 25th wedding anniversary. We are not social people per se. We are ministers of the gospel. So every issue in our life and every celebration and season is an opportunity to minister and to help men become all that God wants them to be. So last Sunday, I spoke about family as a tool in the hand of God. What I did essentially is to give you three different definitions of family that are in line with divine perspectives. Number one, I said family is the original plan of God for his operation on the earth. Family is original plan of God for his operation on the earth. For the operation of God on the earth to work, God needed to bring up a family. God always operates on the earth through families. Okay? Family is a divine joker through which God moves his purpose 
progressively from generation to generation. You have heard of the God of Abraham. You have heard of the God of Isaac. You have heard of the God of Jacob. Is the same God. Okay? Moving his purpose progressively from generation to generation through family. So every time you think of family, don't think of the name of the family. Don't think of the color of the family. Don't think of the language they speak. Don't think of their tribe. Think of the purpose of God. Did you hear what I say now? Did you hear what I say now? Think of the purpose of God. I have a family because God has a purpose to push on the earth using the instrument of my family. That's how Christians think. That's divine perspective. I don't have a family because, well, I felt that I'm old enough. I should have a wife and then begin to raise children. No. No. I have a family. God made it possible for me to have a family because he has a purpose that only my family can push on the earth. So, when it concerns my family, the issue is not my name. The issue is the purpose of God. So, if all my children are female, I wouldn't feel anything. Because I told you on Sunday that when people have all their children, they say, well, who is going to continue? Who is going to continue? Who is going to bear my name? So, they, they, bring, they begin to take steps that complicate their life. Some go and marry another person. Some go and impregnate different people in a desperate search for a male child. Are you hearing me now? Just what is he thinking about? Who will take my name to the next generation? The issue about family is not your name. The issue about family is purpose. God's purpose. Somebody say God's purpose. So if you have four children and all of them are female, it doesn't make any meaning. It is the purpose of God that is the focus. That's how Christians think. That's the kingdom perspective. Most of the problems that come into our family come because there is a deviation between our perspective and divine perspective. And as much as there is a deviation, we're going to have a lot of problems. So family is God's joker to move his purpose progressively from generation to generation. Number two, I told you family is the means through which God ensures the blessings of man, the fruitfulness of man, the multiplication of man, the replenishing of man, the dominion of man, and the victory of man on the earth. Family is the means through which God establishes and ensures that man is blessed, that man is fruitful, that man multiply, that man replenish, that man dominate, that man is victorious on the earth. The third meaning, I told you family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seed from generation to generation. Family is the means through which God intends to raise and perpetuate godly seed from generation to generation. How many of you remember that? Those were the three things. So when God is thinking of family, he's thinking of godly seed. Godly seed can only be raised and perpetuated through family. God needed families to raise godly seed. God needed family to perpetuate godly seed. So the end product in the heart of God, when he's thinking of family, is raising and perpetuating godly seed. Did you get what I'm saying now? Did you get what I'm saying now? When God is thinking of family, he was not thinking about a man trying to enjoy sex. He wasn't thinking about a woman enjoying sex. No. But that's the focus of most people. But they don't know that after sex, 
something will happen. Sex will lead to something. But when God is thinking of family, God is not thinking of sex per se. God is thinking of the godly seed that will come. Beloved, our world will never know peace until family begin to produce godly seeds. Did you get what I'm saying now? All the problems in our society are caused by ungodly seeds of many families. All the criminals in our society, they are members of family. All the kidnappers, all the ungodly people, they came from a family. Nobody dropped from heaven. So until we begin to align our family with the perspective of God, and we begin to have more families racing and perpetuating godly seed, our world will never know peace. It is one thing to pray. It's another thing to get down to work. Are you hearing me now? All of us that were here, if you make godly seed, the racing of godly seed, your own focus, and I make the racing of godly seed my own focus, and everybody make the racing of godly seed their own focus, our society will begin to change. Yes or no? But if we do not think like that, if we have no concern for racing and perpetuating godly seed, and the only thing we're doing is we're praying and fasting, we're praying and fasting, that God should change this society, change this society, we will pray till all of us will die one by one, and nothing is going to happen. Did you hear me now? So prayer is only important and powerful when men are doing the right thing. When people are doing the wrong thing and they are praying, it is foolishness. So the right thing as far as family is concerned is that let the racing and the perpetuation of godly seed be the reason for you having a family. Because that is God's plan. So that every have godly seed. Children that will know God. Children that will serve God. If everybody is focusing on godly seed, everybody will know that it is not age that qualifies you to marry. Everybody will know that it is not experience that qualifies you to marry. That it is the training you have received from God and the experiences you have had in working with God are the things that you are going to use now to raise godly seed. Do you get what I'm saying now? So we have people that are getting older and getting married, but they don't know God. So the God they don't know, they can't teach their children. And then we keep on having vagabonds. We keep on having godless children. We keep on having boys with guns and girls who are who are prostitutes. Because even the people that are supposed to train them, themselves have no training. They rush into marriage and raising family because they think they are getting old. They don't know that marriage and family will take more than age from them. Hello, somebody. If you run into marriage and family without a requisite encounter with God, your marriage and family will constitute a nuisance in the society. Because we are going to raise children that have no training. Children that have no understanding of God. Because you are not going to give what you do not have. I'm praying that there will be a revolutionary thinking in this direction that our world will begin to change. So that's what I told you last week Sunday. That family is a tool in the hand of God. Now, today, I'm going to talk about God's goal for your family. God's goal for your family. God's goal for your family. What is the goal of God for your family? What is the target of God for your family? The goal of God for your family is different from physical things. I've seen families that are very rich, but they have 
they do not they do not create room for God to fulfill his own goal. The goal of God is talking about what does God wants to do in your family. Until you know what God wants to do in your family, you will never know what you yourself should do in your family. And over the years, God has taught me and mommy nine things that God wants to do in a family. And it's the secret of our stability. You know, when I tell people, it's not going to happen tomorrow and I wake up and say, I don't like my wife again. It's never going to happen. If the devil is waiting for that to happen, he's just wasting his time. They do hear what I say. Now. You ask me, Daddy, why are you so sure? I have been sure even before we step into marriage. I've been sure. In fact, if you, if you read one of these days, I will bring a wedding invitation card to the church. You will see our toast. Our toast is not, uh, your God will be my God. Where you die, I die. Where I live, I live. That's not our toast. Our toast is a unique one. We said we are convinced of a lifelong blissful togetherness. That is a sentence in our toast. We are convinced of a lifelong blissful togetherness. I know many people that saw that toast that day, they've just been laughing at us. <laughs> what did they know? What did they know? What did they know? When people rate you by physical things, they miss God. Did you do hear what I say now? What? Okay, mommy is bringing it up. Oh, thank you. Yeah. When people rate you by physical things, they, they, God doesn't work by age. God doesn't work. The experiences that most people are boasting to have are demonic experiences that is not going to help anybody. Okay? I'm very sure that there are people that attended our wedding that will be, when they see, they say, they don't know we have an encounter with God. They don't know we have an encounter with God. Are you hearing me now? And every strength and grace you see in our life today is a function of that encounter. We knew we were going to be successful from the first day. We work for success from the first day. We pray for success from the first day. We had an understanding of success from the first day. So what is happening today is not just what's, what we stumble upon. It's intentional. Let me read to you. Our love is not founded on human opinion or feelings. But a conviction based on God's eternal counsel. The experiences we have been opportune to pass through have only succeeded in making our commitment stronger. By His grace, we are convinced of a lifelong blissful togetherness. Our God reigns. Now, now, it wasn't a grammar. It was not a grammar. It was a revelation. Born out of conviction. When, when, when people talk, they, they, they think success in marriage is what you just suddenly stumble upon. No. Because once you begin to have that mentality, that's the beginning of failure. Look at this building now. Did it just come up? Did we just stumble here? When we came in here, this, we, we have palm tree here. That we uprooted. That different trees here that we uprooted. I remember there are palm trees at the back that we uprooted that time. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It was bush when we came here. But by deliberate intervention, transformation began to take place. That bush of that day is where we are today. Are you hearing me now? Now, that's, when it comes to family, marriage and family, there must be deliberate understanding. Deliberate intervention, deliberate knowledge, deliberate revelation, deliberate steps. Otherwise, success will never come. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, the point we are making is that we said by his grace, we are convinced of a lifelong blissful togetherness. That is from the first day of 
And some of the things that God showed us and the lessons we learned along the way have proved that truly that was possible. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So, the goal of God, if you don't know what is the goal of God in your marriage and in your family, the devil will take over. So, when I say the goal of God in your family, I'm talking about what does God wants to do in your family. Not just in your family alone, in every family that he ordained. What does God want to do? What does God want to do? What is the target of God? What is God targeting? Because most times, what we are targeting is not what God is targeting. Are you hearing me now? You discover that it is not how many cows killed on the wedding day that determine the success of that wedding, of that marriage. You will know that it is not how many cars given as gift to couple on the wedding day that determine the success of that marriage. We prepare two months for wedding, but we have no preparation for marriage and family life. Everybody thinking in terms of wedding now or marriage now is thinking about the wedding day, the wedding day, the wedding day. They save towards it, they plan towards it, they pray towards they do everything towards the wedding day, but they forget that after the wedding day, there is the marital and family life. The wedding day is just at most two days. These days now, they do one day. Even though I have my personal reservation about that. I do not like this one day stuff. But sometimes you cannot uh, stop it. I prefer the two days. Don't lump it up. Do the engagement on a Friday. Or any day you choose. And then come for the church wedding and reception. Not that you just take everything and you. That, that's a sub subject for another day. Praise God. <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So people prepare more for the wedding. They don't know that wedding at most is just two days. A marriage is many years. A wedding was just two days. A marriage clocked 25 years yesterday. So if we were preparing for that two days, we would have been long forgotten. But God prepared us. And we were training ourselves, learning under the Holy Ghost for the marriage, marital, and family life. That is a long time to come. I know we're still going to celebrate 50th. Yeah. In good health. Yeah. The same principle is, that is working in 25 years is the principle that will improve upon, that will work better. That's why a correct family, the older they get, the more stronger they become. The things of God, does not, there is no room for weakness in the things of God. When there is weakness in your marriage, something is wrong with that marriage. Maybe God is not giving full allowance. God is not permitted to work. Maybe the principles of the word of God are not fully in operation. If you allow God totally to take over your marriage and family will be getting stronger and stronger by the day. You know wine. How many of you know the older the wine, the tastier it becomes? How many of you know that? How many of you know about wine? The older the, older the wine, the tastier the wine becomes. The older the wine, the tastier it becomes. The thing with family that God ordained. The older they become, the stronger they become. The more loving, the more mature, the more godly they become. The more experienced they are, the things of God. That is the purpose of God. So what is God wanting to do in your family? There are nine things. But before I begin to tell you those nine things, maybe I will tell you three today. I want you to take note of this second point. God can never fulfill his goal in your family if you are not ready to cooperate with him. God will need you to fulfill his goal in your family. Many times, the husband, the wife, are the greatest hindrance to the goal of God in marriage. Human beings can stop God 
from doing what he planned to do. So for God to fulfill his goal in your family, you must cooperate with him. You must be ready to allow him. You must be ready to say, Lord, whatever you want me to do so that you can fulfill your goal, I will do it. Sometimes it may look it may make you look like a foolish person when you are allowing God to fulfill his goal. If that is what it requires, better look foolish and have a strong, healthy family. God cannot unilaterally fulfill his goal without your participation. You can't bab the head of a man in his absence. You can't shave somebody's head in his absence. Did you hear what I say? No matter how wonderful the goal of God for your family is, no matter how sovereign our God is, the God that has all power, he will not do what he wants to do in your family without your participation and your cooperation. Is that okay? That is very, very important. So, what are the things that God wants to do? Number one, God wants to destroy the spiritual hindrance, the emotional hindrance, and the mental hindrance to the fulfillment of your family destiny. God wants to destroy the spiritual hindrance the emotional hindrance and the mental hindrance to the fulfillment of your family destiny. That's the first thing God wants to do in your family. He wants to destroy the hindrance as many as they are spiritual, emotional, mental hindrances and so on and so forth hindrances that want to hinder the fulfillment of your family destiny. Have you noted that one? Have you noted it? Look up, let me explain that. The first thing you must know about family, as far as God is concerned, is your family destiny. Somebody say, my family destiny. Your family destiny is what God ordain your family to achieve. God has a general purpose on the earth. Look at my demonstration. I want you to get my demonstration. My demonstration will give you better understanding. God has a what? A general. Somebody say general. You see my hand. You see what I did. A general purpose on the earth. I remember when we were in secondary school. We have the school garden. I don't know if they still have school garden in secondary school now. And that time, school garden is compulsory for every student. Especially those that are getting to form 4 or form 5. You must do practical agric in the school garden. In fact, they will give you, the school garden will be very big. Now, they will now apportion different plots for students. So you are going to put your name on your spot. They will tell you what to plant. Sometimes they tell somebody to plant maize. That's how it is done in our day. Sometimes they tell another person to go and plant okra. We don't plant the same thing. Sometimes it may be a section of the school garden where only maize will be planted there. Students will be allocated to different plots to plant only maize. And then in other section, it may be okra. Students also will be allocated there to plant only what? Okra. Like that, like that, like until we have a very big garden. School garden used to be a big thing in my day when I was secondary school. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? And everybody will be busy with his own plot. Your Greek master must not get to your farm and see it weedy. And see it fill up, you are going to have punishment. 
So everybody, you see everybody will be going to his own plot and making sure that he's doing it. I mean, if you have any problem, you talk to your Greek master. You talk to your agri prefect and all that. Amen. Now, look up. The general garden is the general purpose of God. Your family destiny is what, you are, what your family is supposed to do within that general purpose. A single family cannot fulfill the general purpose of God on the earth. So God apportioned it. God apportion it. Your family, this is your own role in my general purpose. So you see that the role of each family must be connected to the general purpose. Are you following me? So they will, they will now share it. Now, God is that a Greek master. Are you hearing me now? Your pastor and church is that your a Greek prefect. That monitor what we are doing, what we are doing, what we are doing, what we are doing. So, somebody who is not, who does not have an understanding of his family destiny, will have problem. Your family destiny is what the God, what does God want your family to do in his purpose? What role does your family, must your family fulfill in God's purpose? Just as we have individual destiny, we also have family destiny. Individual destiny, you can fulfill it all alone. Family destiny, you cannot fulfill your family destiny alone. You will need the cooperation of your wife or your husband and children now to fulfill your family destiny. Now, if a family does not know their family destiny, that family is going to have problems. Because that family will be doing what will be contradictory to the purpose of God. Now, if a family does not fulfill their family destiny, that family is a waste as far as God is concerned. Because they have no relevant, productive role in the purpose of God. Look at me, everybody. We have families that have nine professors. Nine professors. The same father, the same mother. Nine of them, professors. You know in the world, everybody will salute that family. Yes or no? They will say, hey, that's a great family. But if they, all they became was to be a professor, but they never fulfilled their family destiny, as far as God is concerned, it was a waste. I'm telling you. So the education that your family has, is not what is important to God. The wealth that your family has is not what is important to God. The background of your family is not what is important to God. What is important to God is, does your family know that there is a destiny in God to fulfill? And did they pursue and fulfill it? Are you hearing me now? Mary and Joseph they were not among who is who in their day. They were not rich in their day, were they? They were not leaders in their day, were they? They were not popular in their day, were they? If they were rich, if they were popular, if they were among the wealthy people, among the, what they call, um, celebrity, they will go and give back to their very first child in the hospital. Where did they give back to Jesus? Where did they give back to Jesus? Where many of us cannot even go and urinate. That's where they gave back to Jesus. That will tell you the social status of Mary and what? And Joseph. They were peasant. They were less than common men. But you know what? Through them, the savior of the world was born. That great family, as far as God is concerned. Did you hear me now? That's what? That's a great family. The first place where people miss it, where family miss it, is lack of alignment with God as far as their family destiny is concerned. God can't do anything with you until you understand what your family is supposed to do within the purpose of God. This family, what is the family destiny? 
Why is this family needed? What is the role that this family must play in the general purpose of God? That's how a Christian starts a family. Are you hearing me now? Beloved, that was clear to myself and mommy from the first day. In fact, majority of the times we spent in our courtship, three years and eight months, were periods that we were settling those things out. Settling those things out. I remember mommy would engage me in many questions. She asked a lot of questions. What is God's plan for your life? I remember a particular day we met and we were sharing and then she told me, what's God's plan for your life? And if I was doing MMM, M, well, I don't know, she won't marry me. She won't marry me. So the focus was not what job does he have. The focus was not what is the payout? What's his salary package? The focus was not his physical look. No, the focus was your purpose. Purpose. Because if I don't know God's purpose for my life, I have no fitness to bring another person to my life. A man that doesn't know where he's going will mislead another person that joins him. Is somebody hearing me now? I remember there are many things we spoke that time. Some of them have started manifesting. Some of them were still believing God for it. I believe I knew I was going to be a pastor. And I knew my ministry would be teaching based. So we began to gather materials. We began to gather materials. Solid Christian materials. In fact, we formed a library. Bef during our courtship days, we call it Samlin Library. Samlin Library is still there up till today. Samlin. She is Evelyn. I am Samuel. So I took Sam from my own name. I took Lynn from my own name and put Samlin Library. So I began to buy books. She buy books. We have stamp for it. We stamp it and begin to label 001, 002, 003. That is the basis of our library today. Most of the books we bought that time are the books that are critical for our ministry today. Some of the stuffs that developed my spirit were part of those books we bought that time. Are you hearing me now? That was happening during our courtship days. So we didn't step into the vehicle that we didn't know where it was going. We were clear about the future. We were clear about the purpose of God. We were clear about the role we are supposed to play in the purpose of God before we step into it. Do you know when you come on a wedding day in front of the altar and you are taking back, you are entering into a contract? How do you sign a contract that you don't know the terms and conditions? That's the mistake that many people are making today. You sign a contract, you don't know the terms and conditions, you just sign it. It's only a foolish businessman that does that. Yes or no? Business people that want to have contract today, before they put their signature to paper, what would they say? They will clear the terms. They will clear the condition. This, 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 everything clear. They put it on paper. Everything clear. Then you sign. I sign. That's what you are doing when you are signing your marriage certificate. Only God knows how many people today do not even know <laughs> that there is a term or condition and they are signing. All that is important to them is the dance. You are married today, tomorrow no man. You are married today, you are married forever. You know, you, you know where I'm dancing to. <laughs> how many of you have witnessed wedding service here before? You know that's where they sign. That's where I'm dancing to. Everybody is dancing. Hey, 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 all the choristers will be singing and all that. You know, some people are dancing like that into their bondage. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing me now? These are the things that God told us. We, we, we were, when we were walking to the altar, we were walking with full understanding. Are you hearing me now? So when I look at people's attitude towards that time, some, pe some people were just doing like this like, that time. I knew some of them. And I still see some of them today. I'm telling they are humbled by the things that God has done. They were doing like this to us that our, our own is too much. In fact, some people say, do they think marriage is grammar? 
I, I used to I used to use uh, recommended glasses that time. My wife also used recommended glasses. In fact, some people say maybe it's the glasses they are using that doesn't make them even see. Let's see how far they we go. But today they have been proven wrong. Are you hearing me now? They have been proven what wrong. So while I was walking to the altar. Um, with, my, with my wife, to take the oath, we knew what we were entering into. We knew what we were entering into. We knew the terms. We knew the conditions. We were not taking our traditional understanding into marriage. We were not taking our family culture into marriage. We were not taking our liabilities, ancestral liabilities into marriage. We were coming to marriage with full understanding of God's perspective. So from the first day, the journey was clear. Are you hearing me now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So that is a family destiny. Somebody said that is a family destiny. That is the reason for your family in the first instance. Every other thing we do in our family without the family destiny is a waste. Why should there be a family at all? It's because that is a family destiny. So when you know that, you will also know that that is what the devil is fighting against. Hello, somebody. How many of you know the devil is fighting against your family destiny? The devil will bring up all kinds of hindrances. Hindrances. Stop your family destiny. Because until you fulfill your family destiny, you will never have peace. Until you fulfill your family destiny, you will never know joy. Your joy, your peace, your progress, your prosperity... Is within your understanding and pursuit of your family destiny. And I told you your family destiny is the role that God wants you to play in the fulfillment of his general purpose on the earth. So if we are only sending children to school without giving them understanding of the family destiny, they will be graduates, they will be professors, but they will have no knowledge of God. They will have no connection with the purpose of God. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Our children were connected to the purpose of God before they were, before, before they were born. We prayed to a point and God told us, I'll give you three children. This is, these are their names. We receive the names, all the names. It is not that when the naming service is tomorrow, we now begin to crack our brain. Hey, hey, you know some couple will fight themselves on the name they want to give their children. Are you hearing me now? Our own was not like that. No. We receive that name prophetically. I remember the day we received the name of the three of them, we were on Okedare, observing marathon, marathon fasting. We will go there very early on Friday and return on Sunday morning to get into the service. And it is after service on Sunday that we will break our fast. We would have eaten, the last time we would have eaten will be Thursday evening. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Thursday evening, we go down there and pray, pray, pray through. And then from there, come to the church directly. And after the service, we break our fast. It was one of such prayer trips that God gave us the name of our children. I've taken my children to that place when they were much younger. I said, this was where God gave us your names. He didn't only tell us their name. He told them, the first one is going to be a male. This is his name. The second one is going to be a female. This is her name. The third one is going to be a male. This is the name. And those prophetic names have spoken into their manifestations. The names were ordering their steps. It's their prophetic description of their manifestations. God is deliberate about what he's doing. Are you hearing me now? Now, some of us who are parents here, you are listening to what I'm sharing with you. You will have the privilege to teach your children. So it's not a wasted knowledge. 
you have the privilege to teach some other children that will see you as a father figure or a mother figure who may not have the privilege of this understanding. And not some of you that are not married, you will begin to adjust your mindset to align with divine perspective so that you can walk it the way God wants it. That is when we have the result of God. Is somebody hearing me now? So, what God wants to do is that hindrance to your family destiny. God wants to destroy it. That's the first thing God wants to do. Because that family destiny will be fought against. The devil will oppose it. The devil will raise up hindrance. Some of the hindrances will be spiritual hindrance. Just for you not to fulfill your family destiny. Just for your family not to fulfill the destiny that God has ordained for them. The devil will raise spiritual hindrances. The devil will raise emotional hindrances. The devil will raise mental hindrances. The devil sometimes can raise medical hindrances. Sometimes he can raise financial hindrances. All kinds of hindrances. What is he after? To stop you from knowing your family destiny and from fulfilling it. So the first goal of God for your family is to destroy all kinds of hindrances that the devil is bringing up. So that you are free to know the destiny and to pursue it and to fulfill it. Is that okay? And when you know that that is the first thing God wants to do, you begin to cooperate with God. Every step God is taking to destroy such hindrances, you will align with it. Whatever it will take for you to also do to ensure that God destroy every hindrance standing between your family and the fulfillment of his destiny, you will also align with it. That's the first thing God wants to do in your family. Is somebody hearing me now? God does not first and foremost want to give you a car. Mm -hmm. God does not first and foremost want to give you a house. That's how human beings think. That's not how God thinks. What is the purpose of a house we have and there is no, fam there is no peace in that family? Talk to me. What is the essence of the car that a family has and there is no unity, there is no joy, there is no love in that family? House is good, though. car is good. Though. God can give you, God has been giving people. But that's not the first thing God wants to do in your life. Is somebody hearing me now? That's not the first thing God wants to do in your life. The first thing God wants to do in your family is the hindrance the devil is raising up against your family destiny. God wants to destroy it. That's his first goal. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? I remember, come my dear, I remember when I was growing up, I was, I was thinner than this boy. I was thinner than this boy. But I have a destiny. And I came from a family. And the devil brought all kinds of hindrances to stop me within that family setting. I can tell you stories of how the devil focused on me. Because the devil knew that I am one, I am one highlight in that family. That we have many people in our family. The, the family destiny may be carved around one person. In that family. Are you hearing me now? And the devil is going to face that person. The devil is going to face that person. Why are you the firstborn male in your family? It is because of the family destiny. I tell firstborn male. So most firstborn male are not serious people. And the devil knows his strategy. The Yoruba says, How many of you understand that statement? How many of you agree with me? If the firstborn is manifesting wrongly, it is easy for the other ones to also manifest wrongly. That's why the devil is going to fight the firstborn. How many of you know Jesus was firstborn in his family? And he knew where he was going as at the age of 12. In fact, he knew where he was going before at the age of 12. So ask yourself, why are you a firstborn in your family? Why are you a firstborn male? Why are you a firstborn female? Why are you the only male in your family? Why are you the only girl in your family? 
There is a purpose. There is a destiny. Those are the things that we must begin to apply our heart with. When you see some family that has serious problem, that's a family that has great destiny. The serious problem is the opposition of Satan to that destiny. When you see some family having sicknesses, there are some sicknesses that flows in their generation, in their line. This, the first one has it, the second one has it. And that's a family that has great destiny in the area of health. And the devil is raising up that monster to stop them. Are you hearing me now? When you see some family that are peculiarly poor, that are wallowing in abject poverty, that's a family with a great wealth destiny. The devil is going to raise opposition to fight God's purpose for your life and for your destiny. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Go and look at the things that are too difficult for you to do. That is the area of your destiny. And the devil is raising that difficulty as his opposition to the fulfillment of God's purpose for your life. But how many people know that? How many people know that? Why are you the first person to build a house in your family? Why are you the first person to go to school in your family? Why are you the first person to graduate in your family? When we have revelation of reasons behind our life, we will not have any reason to be proud. Because you will know that those things are in full alignment with your destiny. It is people that have no revelation that are walking up in the streets of life and, and getting pompous and, 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 and behaving foolishly. So the devil is going to come to raise anything to stop that family. Look at the family of Jacob. Jacob has four wives and he has 12 sons. But that destiny is around Joseph, the 11th son. Number God does it sometimes the way God works. <laughs> ah, God can leave the firstborn and come to the eleventh born. Can you hear what I'm saying now? He has eternal counsel. His counsel are eternal. So that build up is around Joseph. And look at what the devil did with Joseph. He fought him hard. And he used the people that are critical to him to fight him. Those are the hindrances that the devil is raising. Not to stop Joseph, but to stop the family. Do you know when the brothers of Joseph surrendered themselves to be a tool in the hand of the devil? They thought they were stopping Joseph. They didn't know that they were stopping themselves. Did you hear me? Assuming they successfully stopped Joseph. What would have happened to all of them? Talk to me. What would have happened to all of them? All of them would have been wiped out. Hunger, the famine that took them to Egypt. God knew about it before the foundations of the world. So trying to stop Joseph was their, was their foolishness because they were actually stopping their family. It was the family of Joseph that was supposed to raise the world, to help the world. To rescue the world from that famine that was coming to wipe out the world. But they were fighting against Joseph. They didn't know that if they stopped Joseph, they stopped themselves. God has no apology for his program. If God chooses to build your family destiny around, around an individual in that family, God doesn't have any apology to give to any other member of that family. Wise people in that family who have revelation will notice that quickly and begin to align themselves and begin to align themselves and begin to align themselves not to fight what God has done but to align with what God has done. I explain for a reason to Joseph, God doesn't give that a kind of explanation. Hello, how many of you know that Ruben will conveniently give back to Joseph? Do you know that it's not a small gap between the firstborn and the eleventh born? Talk to me. Huh? It's not a small gap. 
I'm the first born on my mother's side. Pastor is the last born. I will give back to Pastor Ba without, without, without. Can one go in a big bin? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So you always see the first born and the last, eh? Without stress, I'll give back to him. Last one call one me daddy. I'm his daddy. Apart from being his spiritual father and all that, I am his daddy. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? So Reuben can give back conveniently to Joseph. Only God knows how many Joseph Reuben would have given back to. But God built the salvation of that family around who? Joseph. God has no excuse to come and give and say, sorry, uh, 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 it is Reuben that should open his eyes and align with the doings of God if he's going to succeed. So any attempt for Reuben to stand against Joseph, he, has, he is wiping down his life. Do you understand me now? So all this family jealousy, family jealousy, it is foolish people that are getting involved in such things. Wise people who are spiritual will see where God is going on time and there will be no reason for jealousy. They will simply align with what God has what has done. Because, listen to me, beloved, nobody can undo what God had already done. Except the person that will die. Did you hear what I'm saying now? Praise God. So, do you know, in this boy's family now, maybe he's the center of attraction. Maybe that is the reason why he came to a church like this. To receive the training that the father or mother may not probably be equipped to give to him. Not that they don't want to give him that training. But they may not have the revelation for that training. And they may not have the equipping for that training. So how does God compensate for that? He brings him to a church where he can hear the word of God and get so that he will be fully prepared for his destiny and his family destiny may be around his life. That except this one succeed, no other person will succeed in that family. So any one of his siblings that may not understand that, that is fighting him and fighting and fighting him, is in league with the devil. And anybody who is in league with the devil is in open confrontation with God. How many of you are still following this teaching tonight? These are the things that were clear to us early enough. Early enough. That there is a family destiny. God wants you to fulfill your family destiny. But the devil will rise up against that family destiny. What does he bring up? Hindrances. Somebody say hindrances. He will bring all kinds of hindrances. Your family destiny is your family destination. That's why your family is needed in the first instant. Are you hearing me now? But the devil will bring all kind of hindrances so that that family will be stopped from fulfilling that destiny. That hindrance is what God wants to destroy. So we can fulfill our family destiny. That's the first goal of God in your family. See that. Look at 1 John chapter 3. I'm reading 1 John chapter 3. Once the entrances are destroyed, you can fulfill your family destiny. But you must make sure you are not also contributing to the hindrance. But you are fully aligning with God and contributing to the destruction of that hindrance. First John chapter 3 verse 8. Are you there? I'm reading the Bible says, He that committed sin is of the devil. For the devil sinned from the beginning. Now, this is where I'm going. For this purpose. Somebody say for this purpose. You see God is not a purposeless God. God is a purposeful God. That's why he has no explanation to anybody. As to what he's doing and why he's doing it. You are the one that must receive by revelation. What God is doing. And align yourself with it. God will not come and 
give excuses or explain to you why he's doing that. Okay? Bible says, for this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might what? Destroy the works of the devil. Did you see that? The works of the devil. Those are the hindrances to stop your family destiny from being fulfilled. That's the reason the Son of God was manifested. To do what? To destroy the sickness. Are you hearing me now? Now, look up. Let me explain certain things to you. I knew within my family that God has people he is calling. My family is a family of callings. Now, listen to me. Don't write anything. I want to get this very well. Very, very important. I knew that pastors will come from my family. I knew that. Prophets will come. I knew that. But that is not supposed to start with me. Do you know that is not even supposed to start with my father? That is supposed to have started with our great, 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 great grandfather. Because the purposes of God are eternal. The counsels of God are eternal. But from the beginning of my lineage down to my grandfather, the devil successfully hindered that family destiny. Because they were given to idolatry. I was told that my grandfather was a lay leader in the Anglican church. That he loves God. And there is nothing they want to do in the church that he will not give them. But he's not born again. So you see that there is that smell of callings from that lineage. But the devil successfully hindered them. Now, look up here. I am the second generation pastor in my own lineage. My father was the first generation pastor. Now, what would have happened if I am the seventh generation pastor? Will it not have been stronger and deeper? How many of you understand what I'm sharing with you tonight? Do you understand? So, from the beginning of the world, in my lineage, God knew that callings are in this lineage. No wonder the devil also raised many hindrances to stop them. So, nobody got born again from down the line until my own dad. It was my dad that the first person to get born again in his entire generation and lineage. His father was not born again. His grandfather was not born again. Like that, like that. They were not born again. They may love God, though. They may go to church, though. But they were not born again. My father got born again at around 45 or 46. I got born again at 12. You see how he's becoming stronger and deeper. Did you hear what I'm saying now? The ease with which I understand the things of God, you can't compare, you can't compare my own with that of my dad. Did you hear what I'm saying now? I got born again at 12 when I've not gone through damages of life. He got born again at around 45 or 46 when he's already cast. So most of the temptations and all that that he had to contend with are the temptations of the carnality that he has grown up with for more than 45 years. Now, I didn't have that kind of experiences. Because before I begin to have understanding and exposure of life, I got born again. Did you hear what I'm saying now? But the same thing could have happened in, in their generations like that, that by the time it come to me, I would have been the seventh generation of a pastor born again in that generation. But because the devil successfully hindered them until, and God didn't stop. God was looking for, if he can't get it in this generation, he looks for the next generation. Hello, somebody. How many of you know that God is a generational God? He will not stop his purpose. He can move to the next generation. If you can't get in this generation, move to the next generation. Begin to watch, 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 watch. Create opportunity for them to know God. But all the opportunity created, none of them knew God. 
they all died as sinners. They died as idol worshiper and all that and all that. God is not going to lose hope. He moves to the next generation. He moves to the next generation. He moves to the next generation. He keeps moving, 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 moving until he came to the generation of my own dad. Although he didn't get it on time, he was well above 40 before he got born again. God started with him. So when he came to my own generation, he came on time. It was easier now because he broke that jinx so I could get born again at 12. Did you hear what I'm saying now? That is a family destiny. And I'm praying that you will allow God to destroy every hindrance to your family destiny. You, will, you yourself will not constitute an hindrance to your own family destiny. That's the first thing God is doing. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested. To do what? To destroy the works of the devil. Number two. The second goal of God for your family is the enforcement of the original plan of God. To guarantee a great and glorious future. The enforcement of the original plan of God. To guarantee a great and glorious future. That is the second goal of God in the family. God wants to enforce his original plan. Somebody say destiny. Somebody say plan. Look at me, everybody. I want to, say, I want to explain the difference between the two because most times people use that word interchangeably as if they mean the same thing. They don't mean the same thing. Destiny is the totality of, of the counsel of God about your life. That's destiny. Did you get that now? The totality of the counsel of God. It's an eternal counsel. What God ordained your life for. The totality of it all. That's your destiny. But plan is the steps you will be taking. The steps to fulfill that destiny. Did you hear that now? So if the first thing God wants to do. Is to destroy the hindrances to the fulfillment of your family destiny. After he has done the destruction of those hindrances, the next thing he will do is to enforce his original plan. Because that is what will guarantee a great and a glorious future. What did you write down in your note? Tell me what you wrote down. I want to pick the what? Uh -huh. The enforcement of the original plan of God to guarantee a great and bright and glorious future. Now, I want you to look at, look everybody, look at this. What is the guarantee for a great and glorious future? What is the guarantee for a great and a glorious future? Huh? The enforcement of the original plan of God. Now, so, so a great future is not guaranteed because you have a good education. <laughs> That's where I'm going. A great future is not guaranteed because you had a good education. A great future is not guaranteed because you went to study in, in Glasgow, Scotland. Because you went to study in, in Harvard. So the kind of education you have is not a guarantee of a great and glorious future. A great and glorious future is not guaranteed because you, you are rich and you are wealthy. Some people, you know, if you, if you look, at, look at me, everybody, the way some men rejoice is when they have male children. They don't rejoice like that when they have female children. How many of you have noticed that? How many of you have noticed that? that the, the excitement that greets the birth of a male child in the general family. How many of you know it's not like the excitement of the female child? When they say, ah, so and so has given birth. They say, ah. They say, what does he give birth? 
You say it's a boy. Say, oh, hey, praise God, hallelujah. It's, it's a bouncing baby boy. The way some people say it. As if a boy child is the guarantee of a great and glorious future. I know boy child that are criminals. I know boy child that they, they beat their father to stupor until the man died. They do hear what I'm saying now. Don't let us be foolish. Don't let us, don't let us behave like carnal men. Let's have spiritual understanding to things. So the sex you have, that you are a male, is not the guarantee of a great and glorious future. That your firstborn child is a male doesn't mean that is a great future for you. In fact, there are some people who would have been better for them to have a female child. Maybe their future would have been great. So what is the guarantee of a great and glorious future? The enforcement of the plan of God. Did you hear me now? The enforcement of what? Of the plan of God. So this after God had destroyed the hindrances to your family destiny, the next thing he wants to do is he wants to enforce his original plan. Enforce it. Enforce his original plan. I'm praying for you that as an individual, you will not walk out of God's plan for your life. And I'm praying for your family that your family will not depart from God's original plan. Because once there is a departure from the plan of God, there is a departure from the future of greatness. There is a departure from the future of glory. It is the plan of God that guarantees a great future. That guarantees a glorious future. God has a plan for your family. Original plan. What did I say? Original plan. But one of the things you must learn to do is learn to be satisfied with God's plan for your life. In 25 years of marriage, God has taught us to be satisfied with his plan for our lives. I've had people that tell me, how many people are in that your church? How many people that you sit down there in Akure, you don't want to, ha -ha, with, all the, with all your brilliance, with all, you should have gone to Lagos and look for a job and Listen to me. There is nothing anybody who has gone to Lagos has that God has not done more for me. Did you hear what I just said now? There is nothing. Did you hear what I said? And God did it for me on the road of peace. Because I learned to stay in the original plan of God. Now I could have, I could have abandoned the church and traveled to you know, the devil, brought, the devil brought that kind of advice at a point that get a job in Lagos, go for the pay. They pay you more. You just come home every weekend to do service for them every weekend. Now, if I come home every weekend to do service for you, who will do Bible study for you? <laughs> Praise God. When you are thinking only of yourself, you will never make it in life. Every Christian must think within the context of the plan of God for his life. I hope somebody got something. Think within the context of the plan of God. Think within the context of the plan of God. If it is all about you, you won't make it. So it is the enforcement of the plan of God that guarantees a great and glorious future. A great and glorious future is not a function of you going to Lagos. I know many people that are in Lagos. They are suffering in Lagos. It is people from Akura that is sending money to them in Lagos. It is people from Akura that is sending food to them in Lagos. A great and glorious future is not guaranteed because you went to UK. You japa. If you ja you do you know the meaning of japa? The meaning is oh ni wamo japa Hey, praise God. If it is not in the plan of God for you to go to UK and you japa to UK. <laughs> you, it's a shame that we end it up. Only God knows how many people in UK that are sleeping on the street. Don't you know people sleep on the streets of America? Racing all kinds of shed in bushes, in, 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 in remote places to sleep. Running away from security men because of their papers. Some people will resign from a good job here. 
without a without a purpose of God. They just just want to move. They just want to move. I'm not saying traveling is bad, though, but I'm saying you must do everything within the context of the plan of God. They do hear me now. If anything you do outside the plan of God will will kill you. But before it kills you, it will stress you, and you won't have peace. Are you hearing me now? Your rest is in the plan of God. Your beauty is in the plan of God. Your uniqueness is in the plan of God. Your peace and comfort are guaranteed in the plan of God. Is somebody hearing me now? And sometimes when you know the plan of God, sometimes it doesn't look sensible to man. But that is what guarantees a great and a glorious future. So the second thing God wants to do is the enforcement of his work, original plan, to guarantee a great and a glorious future. Are you hearing me now? That's what God has taught us in 25 years. To be satisfied with the plan of God. To be satisfied with it. To love the plan of God. To embrace the plan of God. If the plan of God today means that I should be eating food without meat, I will gladly embrace it. Because that is what is taking me to a place glorious and great. I won't say I'm suffering. When you understand the plan of God, you won't say you are suffering. Because there is no suffering in the plan of God. There are training. There are development. There are maturity. So what is supposed to train you and develop you? People see it as suffering. I pray God will tell you more of his plans for your life. In the name of Jesus. You won't walk away from the plan of God. Now, let me read this scripture and then we'll pray for tonight. I hope somebody, somebody got something. Amen. So the second thing God wants to do is to enforce his original plan. Jeremiah. These are scriptures that God expansiates for us. Chapter 29. Allow God to give you a fresh picture of this scripture. Allow God to give you a fresh picture of this scripture. Which scripture? Jeremiah 29 verse 11. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord. You may not know, but he knows. Is that okay? God is not mistaken about his thoughts towards you. No. He is deliberate. He is calculated. He is strategic. He knows his thoughts. He is not confused about what he's thinking about you. The Bible says, For I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Say the Lord. Thoughts of peace. Did you get that? Thought of what? Thought of peace and what? And not of evil. To give you what? An expected end. An expected end is what is talk, what, we, what is known as the great and glorious future. In some other translation of the Bible, it says to give you a future and a hope. The future of your life is in the thoughts of God about your life. Did you hear what I say now? It is only the thoughts of God about your life that can guarantee a future for you. And the thoughts of God are the basis of the plan of God. The thoughts of God are the basis of the plan of God. Look up everybody. Not your plan. Not your plan. The plan of God. Did you hear me now? How many of you want to have peace in your life? You want to have joy in your family? Never again work on your plan. Before you find out his plan. Find out the plan of God and start working on the plan of God. You are not the one going somewhere. It is God that is taking you somewhere. You are not the one that made yourself. You are not the one that created yourself. Don't 
What's the plan of God for your life? What's the plan of God for your life? Ere ene ere lelo mi sa 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 to fi ku ko sare eti e tori pe ko mo eto olorun fun aye re Are you hearing me now So I so got married this year I must also get married this year you will fail You will get it wrong Are you hearing what I'm saying now So I so has gotten children I must also have children you will fail You will get it wrong That's not how you walk that's not how to walk Get the plan of God for your life let your family operations be in full alignment with the plan of God. With the plan of God. With the plan of God. Did you hear what I say now? If God planned that I have only one children, I will have two. I will have only one. And I will not be looking at the family that has seven. And say, ah, if you are not going to be a kid, you will not be a kid. I will not be a kid. I will not be a kid. I will not be a kid. Did you hear what I say now? I'm praying that you will not go beyond the plan of God for your life. You know, this is where I'm going to stop to. I'm praying that every one of us will fall in love afresh with the plan of God. You will embrace it. Many of us are too wiser than God. We want to tell God we're wiser than God. We plan for ourselves. We consider looking for the, getting the plan of God as a waste of time. We run our life with other people's idea. Instead of discovering the plan of God. You compare yourself with yourself. You compare yourself with people. And many of us compare ourselves with unbelievers. We want to be like them. We want to talk like them. We want to have what they have. We want to get what they get. And all. That's why we get into trouble. God told us in our 25 years of marriage, stay with my plans for you. They do hear me now. I don't envy anybody. I'm satisfied with the plan of God for my life. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Sometimes when you are walking the plan of God, it looks as if you are stupid. It looks as if you are wasting your life. I've had people that told me, why are you wasting your life? I'm not wasting my life. I'm doing the best that I could do with my life because I'm within the center of his plan. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? You are fulfilled when you are in the plan of God. You have rest when you are in the plan of God. And the devil will do everything to scut through the plan of God for you so you can enter the bush some people's life is from bush to bush, from bush to bush, from bush to bush. That's why there are problems in their life. The plan of God. The plan of God. Somebody say the plan of God. Every firstborn male, most of it, I have seen the, the workings of God. Sometimes he takes the firstborn male as his own. He pick them up as his own. Lay his hand upon them and give them a calling. But their parents want them to do business, to become multimillionaires so that they can help their junior ones. How many of you know that's the calculation of men? How many of you know that's the calculation of men? Some fathers will say, if I can just struggle to train this one, this one will take care of his brother. That is human plan. That's not the plan of God. And go and watch it. Most time, God will tell that one, I, I need him. I need him. So they will not begin to struggle. You know, she will alone nearby. What kind of God do you say you have? Who will take care of your brother? Who will take care of your brother? And all that. Are you hearing what I'm saying now? It's because people are working with their plans. Many are the plans in the heart of man. But it is the plan of God that will stand. It is the counsel of the Lord that will stand. Let Learn to walk in the plan of God. When it comes to, those of you that are not married, when it comes to the point of marriage, get the plan of God for your life. Marry the plan of God for your life. Marry in the plan of God, not your own plan, not your own scheming. If you marry a man that you scheme to get, you will have trouble the rest of your life. If you marry a woman that you scheme to get, you will have trouble the rest of your life. Open it to Jackpin, dress, on dress that impress here. If that is the game you play before you marry, you are signing for trouble. The plan of God. Somebody say the plan of God. Somebody say the plan of God. You know what? That is the only thing that will guarantee greatness. Rise up on your feet. Are you blessed tonight? The prayer we are going to pray today is that I want you to willingly submit yourself to the plan of God. First for your life. Then your family. 
Allow God to enforce his plan in your life. Cooperate with him to enforce his plan in your life. Cooperate with God to enforce his plan in your life. It will take a lot of patience. It, sometimes it looks as if people have left you behind when you are walking in the plan of God. Don't worry. Stay with the plan of God. By the time they fizzle out, you will still be functioning. I'm telling you. Is somebody here what I'm saying now? Some of the people that made jest of us when we were starting, today, they are nowhere to be found. Marriage, did you marry Jilong? You hear what I say? Bobo ti mo sona la yon she pataki. Bo ti eri ma lu pa lo jo wedi ni e. Ti in ti mo so iba yye wa she a she yori. A te ni tok pa ma lu me je lo jo wedi ni e. To je kwe olo do ni ni pa i mo lor no a ti e to lor no. It's a ni literate. It's a complete ignoramus when it concerns the plan of God. Less than one year, they will fizzle out. How many of you? How many of you saw the the word for yesterday? The word of wisdom, the wisdom corner yesterday. Mommy, can you please bring it out? Get to the platform. The wisdom corner for yesterday. The wisdom corner for yesterday. That is not the joining. Is the journey. <laughs> the issue of marriage is not just the joining, but the journey. Did you hear me now? Now, we were joined on 9th of May, 1998. Are you hearing me now? We're joined. If all that was important to us is the joining, so that I can sleep with her and she can get pregnant and begin to produce children and begin to enjoy ourselves and all that, we would have fizzled out. It is not just the joining, but what? The journey. Somebody say the journey. Somebody say the journey. And if you are going to succeed in the journey, you need this truth. Listen to me. Let me address all of you as my son. Let me put it that way. Please listen to me. Because the people that are telling you to go against the truth of the word of God, they will not be there when your cry starts. Some of them would have died. People that are counseling you to get out of the plan of God and do what, you, what makes you convenient instead of the plan of God, they will not be there when your trouble starts. Some of them would have died. But when you stay with God's plan, you will never be alone. God will be with you. Did you hear what I'm saying now? So let, let me finish it. The issue of marriage is not just the, join, the joining, but the journey. The journey of marriage is not a hundred meters race, but a marathon. A marathon. We're still in that race. One year, let me know my shaking it. No, my last. We're still in that race. The only thing that will make you last is this truth. As we walk in this truth, I'm walking it. Cooperate with what God is doing in your life. Cooperate with what God is doing in your family. Stay within the plan of God for your life. Don't look at what God is not giving you. Don't, don't compare yourself with other people. Know the plan of God and walk in the plan of God. You will see peace in your life. Lift up your hands to Jesus tonight. I want you to tell God, Father, I am satisfied with your plan. I embrace your plan for my life. I will not disconnect from your plan. If it is your plan for me, it is the best for me. It is the best for me. If it is your plan for me, it is the best for me. Everywhere I have followed the plan of men, Everywhere I followed my own plan, outside the plan of God, Lord, have mercy upon me today. Have mercy. It's not my plan. Again, it's your plan. It's not my plan. While I was praying this morning, 
I had in my spirit, I, I send it on a platform. I had in my spirit divine alignment. Somebody said divine alignment. Divine alignment. Divine alignment. Divine alignment. Divine alignment will begin to swallow satanic alterations in your life. Divine alignment will begin to swallow demonic alteration. There are many people that the devil has altered their life, but there is a divine alignment coming here. May you experience the miracle of that alignment. I want you to tell God, I bring my life and destiny fully in alignment with your plan. I'm not going to get out of your plan. I'm satisfied with your plan. Whatever is in your plan for me, I take it. Open your mouth and pray. Every spirit that wants to get me out of the plan of God, I take authority over you. I won't listen to the counsel of men against the plan of God. I stay with the plan of God for my life, for my family. I will cooperate with what God is doing so that what God is doing will begin to happen. Let's talk to the Lord tonight. Next week we will continue. Pray and pray and pray.